the 3rd of December 1971, Pakistan launched an unprovoked attack on Indian airfields. Our country faced challenges from both West Pakistan and East Pakistan and was left with no choice but to respond with decisive force. Pakistan launched a full-scale war against us. The Pakistan Air Force suddenly struck at our airfield in Amritsar, Pathankot, Srinagar, Avantipur, Uttarlai, Jodhpur, Ambala and Agra. Prime Minister's message to the country was clear. Aggression must be met. For the Indian Navy, it was a coming of age, a baptism by fire, an opportunity to take the war to the enemy. The task for the Navy was clearly defined in the message from the Chief of the Naval Staff, Admiral Nanda. The commander on the Western Seaboard, Vice Admiral S. N. Kohli, was directed to send a bold and spirited naval force into harm's way to destroy enemy units and harbour installations. The units chosen for this task were the newly commissioned OSA-class missile boats of the 25th Missile Vessel Squadron. Though designed for coastal defence, these missile boats packed a formidable punch if deployed audaciously with ingenuity and daring and emphasis on surprise and perfect timing. What followed became a glorious chapter in the history of the Indian Navy. Due to their limited endurance, the missile boats were towed up to a certain point just south of Karachi Harbour, from where they could proceed at full speed to carry out an attack and disperse thereafter. The crew of these missile boats had just returned after training in the erstwhile USSR and were fluent in the Russian language. All tactical communication during the mission was undertaken in Russian, adding to the deception in case the enemy intercepted the communication. The ships headed north in an arrowhead formation, hugging the Saurashtra coast before breaking out. Their objective? To set Karachi Harbour ablaze. Just about 40 miles from Karachi, INS Nirghat reported a radar contact at a distance of 25 miles. The contact was evaluated to be a warship and Nirghat was ordered to engage. She altered course towards the target and launched a missile. The Pakistani destroyer Khyber was hit with the Indian Navy's first shot of the war. Nirghat had drawn first blood. Nipat and Veer continued steering north. Veer launched a missile at the minesweeper Muhafiz and disintegrated the target. Just before midnight, Nipat launched a missile towards the harbour entrance and scored a direct hit, setting the Kiamari fuel tanks and other harbour facilities ablaze. A fire that took four days to extinguish. The Chief of Naval Staff signalled, Operation Trident a success, Karachi ablaze, I am proud of you. This was swiftly followed up by Operation Python as the second wave of attacks. The total annihilation of ships and harbour facilities completely unnerved the Pakistani Navy. In a panic, they recalled all their major surface combatants to harbour. The success of these attacks had a dramatic effect on the war. The Indian Navy had accomplished the assigned task in style and within the next few days of the war, a naval blockade was also imposed. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, the heroic actions of the naval units led by the aircraft carrier INS Vikrant ensured that the Indian Navy achieved control of the seas around both wings of Pakistan and scored an emphatic victory at sea. 
the country finally tasted triumph when General A.K. Niazi capitulated on the Eastern Front and signed the Instrument of Surrender on the 16th of December 1971. The stunning success of the Indian Navy's Operation Trident brought glory to the service and the 4th of December is fittingly commemorated as the Navy Day, the day when Karachi was set ablaze.